Hey, what's up you guys? It's been quite a while since I've popped out a video. A lot of things have been going on in the past several months and finally something came up that I thought might be kind of cool to talk about. And the whole thing came about because I've been experimenting with using Luminar for my editing and all these improvements that have come out with Lightroom and just spending a lot of time focusing on my workflows and post-processing and trying to be as efficient about that as possible and started looking at things like Loop Deck. So Loop Deck is a super cool interface that basically has like dials and sliders and buttons. Kind of removes the need for a mouse in your uh, Lightroom workflow and in Luminar. And while the whole thing is super cool and very interesting to me, the price point was just a little bit high for what it is. And essentially what it is, is a MIDI controller. And that's just this musical interface that it's uh, basically, well, it's like this. It's a series of buttons and knobs and dials that most people would use to create music, but through a cool open source community, there is a plugin for Lightroom available called MIDI to LR or MIDI to Lightroom. And like I said, it's an open source project that allows you to interface a MIDI controller with Lightroom. Full customization of all these buttons on the, the MIDI controller, all the knobs, uh, the dials, all the little push buttons, everything is customizable in Lightroom. And the cool thing about this is, is the cost. The barrier to entry for Loop Deck is about 300 bucks. This Behringer, uh, was it the X-Touch Mini? This will set you back a whopping $45. So stay tuned, I'm gonna go through how I have it set up, how to set it up, and exactly how it works. And hopefully this welcome back video is gonna be something that you guys will find interesting. So stay tuned. All right, so here we are. We are on the Amazon page for the Behringer X-Touch Mini. Uh, and coming here today, I see that the price is $41.99. So it's a little less than the $45 to, to $50 that I said earlier. Um, I'm going to include a link below so you can just quickly grab this from Amazon. Uh, that is an affiliate link, which means that if you do order it through that link, I might make like a buck or two on the purchase. It doesn't add to your cost in any way, but it throws a dollar or two in my pocket kind of motivation to keep making videos. Uh, even though the videos are... A little few and far between these days. So once you get your X-Touch Mini and you have it home and you're ready to rock and roll, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to swing over, again via the link in the, the description below, to this page right here. So this is the GitHub page for the software that's going to let this interface with Lightroom for you. Follow the steps for instruction. It is Windows and Mac compatible, so there's no worries there. And the setup is a piece of cake. Just let it do its thing. It knows where to put things, what directories they need to go in, so no worries there. Uh, once that's installed and you're ready to rock and roll now at this point, so what I do is plug in your uh, Behringer X-Touch Mini and then launch Lightroom. So once you've got Lightroom launched, the X-Touch Mini software over here, it's like the, the server for the software, that'll show up in your dock or down in your taskbar on Windows. And you'll also know if it's installed because if you go to your plugin extras, as you can see here, there's now a MIDI to Lightroom section for the, uh, for the interface here. So now it's installed, Lightroom's open, and you know that it's working because it sees it in Lightroom. What do we do next? Well, you'll see that you have this, uh, this little window here. And what happens with this window, I'll show you now. So what I did is I erased all my settings out of it which I didn't erase them. I have them saved as a separate file that you can load later, which I'll make available to you if you want them. Um, but I cleared it out so I can show you how the setup process works. So I've got my X-Touch Mini here, and you can see this very first control dial or knob. Um, I have mine set to exposure. And actually all of these settings, I have them all set up in the order in which I typically work on a photo. So for you, this might be something completely different. I mean, this might be contrast or this might be uh, rotate to adjust your horizon whatever it may be just remember everything on here is super configurable even to, to the point where you can do like keyboard shortcuts with these things so again we've got it plugged in we haven't done anything with it yet so how do you program this well as soon as you activate one of these things I just turned that dial that knob and you can see that I've got this new little uh, section here in the window that popped up and it says MIDI command, and I have no idea what that is, but I'm basically assuming that that is the uh, 
the software side of things recognizing what number this dial is here, this knob. But over here where it says LR command, that's your Lightroom command, what do you want to assign to this? It doesn't get any easier than this, folks. I just click on the unmapped button, and now here are all the options that I can set this to. So for me, it's part of the basic controls, and it's exposure that I want to set, right? So I just click on exposure, and there you go. So now exposure is set to this. I'm going to move this window out of the way. So now you can see as I turn this, the exposure goes up and down. Now what's a bummer is how am I going to get back to zero on this? Um, it's kind of tricky. So you slowly turn and oh, now I'm at plus 0.04. Ah, now I'm at negative 0.04. What do I do to fix this? Well, the easiest thing to do to fix it is assign this knob, which also can be pressed as a button to reset. So now if I press, you see another button pops up here that I can program. So I'm just going to click on unmapped again, go back to my basic develop settings. And down here, there is reset exposure. And just click on that. And now, I'll move that out of the way again. Let's crank this exposure way up. Let's reset it. We'll just push the button. There you go. Back to zero. Super easy. Now, the thing is, let me get that window back over here and show you guys. Now, what I've done just to be safe with this, because reading on the forums and everything, everybody says save often just in case. That way you don't get through and have like, you know, 50 or 60 things all set up and God forbid it crashes on you and then you're stuck at square one. So what I do is I just hit save. Let me pull this window over here so you can see. So now we're going to decide where we're going to save it. I've been saving it in my documents folder. You can save it wherever you want. So here are MIDI controller settings folder that I made. And we can just name this test for YouTube. And just hit save. There. So now if I clear all these rows, which puts it back to scratch, I can load. Let me bring that window back over here. It keeps wanting to open on my secondary display. And go back to Documents, MIDI Controller Settings, and Test for YouTube. And if I hit Open, boom, there it is. Piece of cake. It really gets no simpler than that. And so that was just one of the knobs, right? So you've got the other seven that you can program. And also, like I said, there's earlier in the intro here, there's another button down here. So we're on Layer A right now. If I press this button and activate layer B. Now if I turn this knob, it sees it as a new button. So at this point, I can choose for it to do something different. Ah, uh, let's see, we'll do, uh, how about auto perspective correction? And it's on upright. Kind of a weird one to do. That doesn't really make sense to do that. <laughs> So let's change that. Let's change that to, um, yeah, let's change it to vignette. One way is positive, you know, for a white vignette and the other way black. So now if I want to assign that to reset the vignette, oh, go to effects, reset vignette. There we go, back to zero. That's pretty awesome. So you're basically only limited to your imagination. And the cool thing is also, so 90 plus percent of everything I shoot is like this, what you see on the screen, landscape shots. Uh, so I tend to have my workflow set up for me shooting landscapes. Now, if, um, in the event that I go and do some senior portraits for somebody, for a friend or family member, or shoot a wedding for somebody that I know. Again, I'm saying people that I know because I don't do this <laughs> on the regular. Um, I will actually probably in advance go through and set up my develop uh, settings on the Behringer here, uh, specifically for portrait work. You know, something where I can go through and have a button set up for flagging, for instance, to to flag all the ones that I want to keep. You know, and then another one for reject or what have you. Um, and then you just go through the whole process of setting this up, partic you know. 100% uh, for portrait work, let's say. And then what's cool is when you launch Lightroom and the MIDI to Lightroom server pops up, 
I could just come over here and I could just load my, you know, portrait settings and, you know, forego the landscape settings or what have you. Um, yeah, it's just kind of, it's kind of a cool thing to do. And you can see here, I've got all, most of my things set up. I've still got, you know, a fair amount of these buttons down here that I haven't even assigned to anything yet. I'm kind of running out of things to assign them to, to be honest with you. My workflow is pretty condensed and streamlined, you know, for maximum impact, uh, minimum effort, let's just say that. So I don't necessarily have to use all my buttons, but some of the fun things I've done are I've got my slider set to, to vignette, although that's only if I'm on layer A. So if I'm on layer A, you can see the vignette here with the slider. Um, it's a lot of fun, you guys, and it's cheap. And I'm finding that uh, I've only been using this for a couple of days also, but I'm finding that the more I use it, the more I'm able to not even touch the mouse and keyboard. And aside from just opening up Lightroom and picking the library that I want to work out of, once I'm in there, I mean, I can go through and I can jump through, um, you know, and switch through images, you know, purely with buttons and then do all my adjustments and then on to the next one. Um, I'm still set up, uh, I'm still setting up a button here. This is what I'm going to do when I get done with this video for exporting. So at that point, really, the only thing I'm going to have to do is give my exported image a name upon export, which means I'll need to use the keyboard unless I don't even have that option set and I just export it with the default file name, at which point I have zero contact with the keyboard. Um, super cool. It's a great investment for 40 to $45, I would say. Uh, thanks for watching the video. I know it was brief. If you've got questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll definitely get back and answer those for you guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and hopefully I have another video coming out soon. See you guys.